Hey, it's your Open Source Advocate, and I'm back with another video. And today I want to talk about NVRs, which is video recording systems that you use through your computer or computing device. Uh, network video recorder is what NVR is for. And really, when I look at my home assistant here, I've got these two cameras that look at my backyard and, and give me slightly different views. This is a wide angle camera, and this is a non wide angle camera. And really, I was like, okay, this is great. I have this and I can see it, um, but I couldn't really do much with it just straight out of the gate using MJPEG. So I had to switch it over to an RTSP stream and then I get some extra features and things. And I've looked at MotionEye on, on Home Assistant. I just wasn't as happy with it. And I found Frigate. Um, there's several videos out there about Frigate as well, and they're really great videos. So I'll leave some links to those as well so you can go watch those too. But I thought I'd kind of go through what Frigate gives you. And really, when you open up Frigate, you'll see that it's basically looking at the same cameras, except it's got a little bit more stuff in it. Um, so right here, you can kind of see a view of what's going on. Um, you can click on these things to bring them up and bring up live video, and you can see that it's just it's, it's fairly slow because I have this set to 5 frames per second, and we'll talk about settings and things like that um, in a little bit. But um, we can go back to our cameras here, and then I can, of course, click on this one. And again, you see that it's not a super fast refresh in this case, but Frigate's doing some extra things. It's not just an NVR, but it also does detection, object detection. So in this case, I've set it to detect persons because this is my backyard, and if anybody's sneaking around back there, I want my, my system to let me know. Um, I also get notifications on my phone by using Frigate. I get a whole bunch of entities that get set up in the system for these cameras, and then one of those entities when you set up person detection is motion detected person, and I can set that as a trigger so that it sends me a notification when it detects motion, and then I can come in and check and see what it caught. So you can set up Frigate just to do this part, but you can also set it up to capture those events and, and save them as clips and as photos. So I just want to show you real quick, I've got some construction going on, and this is just a gate that's open off to the side of that wide angle camera. So if I bring that up, you'll see here it's running and it's actually playing and it plays in better than, you know, better than your normal average. But there, so there goes somebody across the gate and here comes somebody else and he stands for a minute. And this triggered basically the person detection, which is pretty awesome. Um, so if we scroll down, we can see exactly what it triggered and it tells you the percentage and it puts a little box around it. So you can tell it whether to do this or not to do this. But I like this because it points out like here's what I picked up and at least thought was a person. So you can see the date and time stamps. You can set all those things to kind of show up on here or not. But I think that's pretty great when you really start thinking about what an NVR can do for you. Because you can have an NVR that works on motion like my front... Uh, uh, or and a, a video camera that works on motion. So, so my ring doorbell camera works on motion. Um, it's pretty great, except it picks up cars that drive by on the street. Even though I've tried to mark off those zones, it picks up reflections from cars during certain times of day because of the sun. It can pick up birds flying by if they're close enough to the camera. Um, so it picks up a lot of things that aren't really people. And what I'm interested in are people uh, coming up to my door or walking through, you know, across my yard or anything like that. So it's not really doing any kind of intelligent motion detection. It's just like, I saw motion, hey, I'm gonna let you know. And you have to go check it out to see if you can figure out what the motion was. So I really like this because this is looking specifically for people. And if it doesn't see that, it, it moves on. Now, there's a lot of objects that can be detected and you can go check out the list on the frig Frigate site and, and basically has a whole list of things you can set to be detected. But today we'll talk about persons just because it's a little bit easier. Um, but when I do look at the events for these things, um, I can go down and we can click and you can see kind of this grid of events that it's catching. Um, and you can see the different people that it's caught walking through my yard and at different points what it caught as the as the person that it detected. But then out here you can see what the percentage was um, that it that it kind of said, yep, I'm pretty sure that's a person. And here's the percentage of how sure I am. And then it gives you dates and times and stuff so you can kind of see that. And then I've got this set to retain this motion over the next few days, um, you know, and then it'll get rid of them. So you can set that to four days, two days, three days, whatever you want. Uh, depends on how much space you have to store this stuff. But I wanted to talk about an NVR today and go through how to set up Frigate with you guys. I want to say thank you to all of my patrons over at Patreon and my subscribers on YouTube. Thank you so much for all of your support. I love doing this channel. I love making this media and this content for you. I hope you enjoy it as well. I do post all of the videos now over at Patreon after one of my patrons made the suggestion, and I don't know why it didn't dawn on me before that. But if you're interested in seeing them through Patreon and getting a notification through Patreon instead of through YouTube or hoping that YouTube's algorithms happens to show it to you, 
jump over and become a supporter on Patreon, patreon.com. I've got the links in the description and the show notes. I appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Okay, I know what you're thinking. We're going to install Frigate, but first we have to do a little bit of startup installation stuff. So we're going to jump over to our test server here, and we're going to go down to Supervisor. And we're going to look, and you see I've got File Editor installed already. If you don't have File Editor installed, just jump over to the add-on store, find File Editor, and click on it, and then click the Install button. Once it installs, just click on Start. Uh, you can also select to put it in your uh, left panel here so it's easier to access. When you've got that, we've got a couple more things we need to install. So the next one's going to be the Mosquito Broker. So here it is in my list. If you can't find it pretty easily, you can just type in MOS for Mosquito Broker. Click on it, and we're going to install that. So we're going to click on Install. We're going to give it just a minute to get it downloaded and installed. It doesn't usually take very long. There you go. And it depends on your internet speed and things like that. Um, we're going to set Watchdog so it'll restart our Mosquito Broker for us as well. Now, there's really not a lot to do here. We're just going to click on Start. And that really should be it. We can go to the log and make sure that everything looks like it's starting up okay. You can check out your configuration, but there's really nothing to change unless you need to change these ports for some reason. I'd say leave everything just like it is. So Mosquito Broker is installed, which is great. Um, we're very quickly going to jump over and just, we're going to hit uh, the supervisor again. We're going to go to system and we're going to go to reboot host. You could probably just reboot core as well. This is a little bit faster, so it might be worth giving it a shot. Um, sometimes it works. Sometimes you need to reboot the entire host in order to get things to kick in. But you'll see a message down here that say it's restarting, so you just have to give it a minute until it kind of goes away, which means everything's restarted. And why we're doing that is we want it to pick up on the auto identification of integrations. So we're going to go to configuration, integrations. And we're just going to kind of look, and you might have to wait for this to build up if you don't uh, see it automatically. Um, and we're going to be looking for this one that says MQTT. So we're going to click on Configure. It's going to come up and say, you know, do you want to do this? And we're going to say, yeah, we do. So Submit. It's going to say Success. It's been configured. And then we're going to just click again. And then you'll see it show up down here in the bottom. So now we're going to click one more time on Configure. And it's going to open up a screen that looks like this. We've got a little more configuration to do, and one of the things you need to do first, which I've already got done, but I'll show you. You're going to go back into, so just leave this for a minute. We're going to go back to configuration. We're going to scroll down to where it says people. And here you'll see I've got one that says test MQTT. So if you want to create a new person, you click on the add person button, and then you would type in your MQTT user. So you could type in MQTT user or whatever you want. And then right here, we're going to click this that says allow them to log in. We're going to enable that, and you'll see it pops up another screen. So we need to give this one a password now. So we're going to give that password two times. Make sure you make it a strong password and type it in correctly both times. And then do not make them an admin, no admin, and then just click on create. When you do that, you'll click on create one more time on this background screen, and then you'll have a new user. So I've already got one. Mine's called testmqtt, and it has a password set up. So once you've got that user in there, you can go back to your configuration, go back to integrations, and you want to get that MQTT integration that's down there, click on configure. And we're going to click right here on reconfigure MQTT. So when this pops up, it's going to have some stuff entered by default. Leave these first two alone. Unless you change the port in your other config, then change it here. Otherwise, leave it alone. But here you're going to put in your MQTT user, which mine was test MQTT. And then on the next line, you're going to put in the password you created for that user. So make sure to type it correctly. Um, click away from that field and then click on Next. It should pop up with this screen. If it doesn't, sometimes you can click Next again and see if it does. Sometimes that means you made a mistake, so kind of check what it says. You really shouldn't have to change anything on this screen at all. So we're just going to go down here and click on Submit. And it says Success. That's what we're looking for. We're going to click Finish. And now we should be able to test this. So if I just do something like slash Brian slash test, and then up here, so I, I can say start listening. Up here, I can put in slash Brian slash test. And then I can put in something like for data. So I can put in on and I can click publish. And you see here it sees that I sent that message and that it says on. 
If I change this to tester instead of test and I hit publish, you see nothing shows up because now it's not listening for that topic. So we know that MQTT is working. We did a real simple test here. No problem. We can stop that uh, from listening for now. So we're good as far as that goes. So MQTT is set up and it's running. That's great. Now we're going to get into the frigate install. So first you have to get MQTT set up and now we're going to get frigate set up. So we're going to go back to supervisor and we're going to go back to our add-on store and you'll see that out of the gate you've got all these add-ons and you've got this hacks already set up probably. Um, so what we're going to do is go and create a custom repository. So we're going to click on the three dots in the upper, upper right. We're going to click on repositories and you'll see it has this add option. So if we go to the frigate documentation, which I'll have linked in the show notes, you can go down here to installation and as you go down to the installation part you'll see there's this link right here you want to copy that link and I'm not going to put that link in the show notes because he could change it and this this you know relates back to his repositories so it's better to go to his documentation and get it but I'll have a link to the documentation there I'm gonna say copy link and I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna paste that link in and I'm gonna click on add it's gonna go out pull down his repo and I should see this one that says frigate which means I'm good, I've got hacks there, which is good, and I'm gonna click on close. Now you'll notice I don't have Frigate just showing up here. Don't freak out about that. In Linux or in Windows, you can use Control F5. I think in Mac, it's Command F5. So I'm gonna use that real quick. That'll refresh, kind of tell it, hey, you know, ignore the cache. And then I've got my Frigate add-ons and you'll have your regular Frigate add-on and your beta add-on. I'm not gonna do the beta today. I'm gonna to do the regular one. So I'm gonna click on that add-on it's going to bring me to this page and I'm going to click on install. Now this can take a minute, so be patient. It might take a few minutes depending on your internet speed and things like that. So just let it spin. But when it's done, you'll see where it shows um, start and then you'll have configuration and data and logs up there. It looks like this. So once it gets ready, you're going to, you'll have start. Don't click start yet. We have to do some configuration first. So we do want to turn on watchdog to make sure it restarts if it needs to. Production mode you can turn on if you want to, and I'm also going to click on show in sidebar, and it always blinks like that, so don't don't freak out about that either. So we've got that set. That's great. We can look at configuration here. There's not a lot to do. There's a couple of ports. We really don't need to mess with it, but we need to go and create a configuration file. So if we look here and we go down, there's configuration, and he has a nice sample here of what we need. So I'm going to kind of go through all the things that I have set up. And then you guys can come in and modify things as you need to. Uh, but it is here in his documentation as well, of course. So we're going to go to our file editor. So you want to go into your file editor and you want to click on the folder so that it opens up this sidebar. Right here you're going to have new file. So you're going to click on new file. And we're going to call this frigate.yml. From here we're going to move down and we're going to click on our new frigate.yaml file. Now this is YAML, so you need to understand that YAML is space sensitive. So we're gonna be putting in certain number of spaces in certain places. It's very important that you do it correctly so that you don't have something messed up when you're done. So the first thing we're gonna start with is we need to tell it where our MQTT server is. So we're gonna do MQTT colon. We're gonna return and do two spaces. We're gonna type in host colon, and then we're gonna give it our host IP address or our host name for the server. Um, since this is a test server, it's got a different name. Yours would probably be homeassistant.local, but if it's not, just use the IP address. Just make sure it's a static IP address. So in my case, this is my IP. You want to use the IP of your Home Assistant install. You're going to type in user and then type in the username that you set up earlier. Then we're going to type password and then type in the strong password you use. Do not copy what I did for a password. That's not really good practice, okay? We're gonna create an extra space there, an extra line, and then we're gonna go back to the beginning and we're gonna type in cameras. We're gonna hit return and hit two spaces. So cameras colon return with two spaces. And I can make this a little bit larger for you guys. I apologize, that's really small. Now maybe you can see what I'm typing. You're going to give this camera a name, so I'm going to call mine pi cam underscore pi underscore cam underscore one and colon. I'm going to give two spaces, and I'm going to type ffmpeg colon, and then return two spaces, and then I'm going to type inputs colon, return two spaces, and then a hyphen and a space, 
and I'm going to give it the path to my camera. Now these need to be RTSP cameras. Make sure you have an RTSP stream running and you need to know what the RTSP stream address is so that you can type it in here. So mine is RTSP colon slash slash 192.168.7.202 and then I'm going to put in the RTSP port but it, it could just work without it. Um, H264 is the end of it. So this is for my Pi cams that I made with my, Pi, my, my Raspberry Pi Zeros. Um, they do a pretty good job and, and they're pretty great but this is the address it has to use for Motion iOS. You need to know what the address is for your camera type and, and it could be different for different cameras so don't depend on what I'm typing here to work for your cameras. You need to know what that RTSP stream address is. We're going to hit return. We're going to do two spaces to make sure we're even with the P and we're going to type in roles R-O-L-E-S and then colon and then we're going to do two spaces on the next line. We're going to do a hyphen and a space. And we're going to put in detect. So this is telling us, this is telling our system that we want Frigate to be able to detect objects that come into the camera frame. Once we have this in, we're pretty much set unless we want to save clips or save recordings of things that are happening. Otherwise, you need to add another role. So we're going to hit return, put a hyphen and a space, and then we're going to type in clips. Now there's multiple roles and again you can check out the documentation for Frigate to see what those roles are and what they can do. But in this case this is the two that I'm interested in. This is the two we're going to start with. We're going to hit return and we're going to go back to where even with the FFmpeg line there. And we're going to type in width and we need to give this the dimensions of our camera for, for what it gets for its uh, aspect ratio. So mine's 1280 by 720 so I'll type in width colon space 1280 height colon space 720 and then we need to put in the frames per second that we want Frigate to use in order to detect objects now again in the documentation the author says use five don't go over five it's not really helpful and it could cause problems um, and again this is not how fast the video will show when you're looking at the recording it's just how fat how many frames it's looking at for detecting objects so we're gonna say FPS colon space and then the number five you could go less than that if you want to just don't go over it now we're gonna type object objects colon and then we're gonna hit return hit two spaces so that you're under the the J we're gonna hit track type in track colon hit return and then we're going to do two spaces with a hyphen, space, person. Now, you can track a lot of different things. So again, if you come back to his documentation, you can come here and you can look at the available objects. So you can see there is just a massive list of different things that you can actually tell this thing to try to track and identify. If you have this camera that's running in your car and you're wanting to use Frigate for that, um, then you can use Frigate to identify cars and bicycles and motorcycles and all kinds of things, buses and airplanes. So you may be wanting it to look for that and it puts a little square around it. It gives you a percentage like I showed in the beginning um, of what it can do. So this is kind of what I'm, what I'm talking about as far as what we can do. So we're going to say person. This is, a, this is the next thing. It's a good start. Um, so we're just going to leave it at person for now because that's what I'm interested in capturing in my yard. And for this part, right now, we're done. So I'm going to hit all the way back to the beginning, and I'm going to go down one line again. Now we need to tell it what kind of detector we want to use. So this is basically, if you're going to use like the coral stick, like he suggests, you don't need this. There will be some different information you put. But in this case, I'm just going to use my system's CPU. So I'm going to type in detectors. And then hit return, two spaces. I'm going to type in CPU1 colon, return, two spaces. Type colon and CPU. Then we're going to hit return. And we're going to save our file. Make sure it saves. Now we're going to go back over to supervisor. We're going to go to our Frigate NVR. Now I'm going to make this just a little smaller so it fits on the screen better. And right here we're going to click Start and then we're going to go and see if we got everything set up correctly. So we'll have to check our logs and see how it goes. You should see something like this where it starts running and you get some CPU uh, going on. We'll go to the log here. 
So it doesn't like something about my, my config. Let me go check and see what I did. Ah, I misspelled inputs, so make sure you put in I-N-P-U-T-S, not I-M-P-U-T-S. It's I-N, like Nora. Once you make that change, save it again. If you, if you copied me and didn't catch that mistake, make sure you do that. Then you can go back down to supervisor, back into frigate NVR, and we'll do restart. And again, you should see the CPU usage go up. We can go check our log, and we should get some output like this. We can refresh to see if we're getting anything else, but it looks like it started. So now we can go to our frigate NVR here in the left sidebar, and we should be able to see the video coming in from the camera. We can. Okay, so we've got our camera up. I'm going to click on it here. Now when we bring it up, we do have some options, and they're kind of hidden, so you need to click on Show Options. What I'm going to do is turn on the bounding box. I'm going to turn on the motion box for a second, and we'll see if we see anything pop up. Yeah, so it sees the shadow moving, it sees the trees moving, so it's going to pop up motion boxes everywhere, because we're not telling it to just check for motion of a person, we're telling it to check for motion. So you do have those options as well, but right now I'm just going to leave bounding box on. I'm going to go walk outside. I'm going to turn on timestamp, I guess. Um, I'll go walk outside here real quick and see if it catches me moving around as a person since that's what we've told it to detect. Okay, so that showed me on there uh, and it put the bounding box around me as I moved around, which is what we're expecting. So make sure that you understand that those options are down there. Now, we want that to save. So if we go look here, we see events, but then there's nothing for me to look at. So we see that it caught something. When we look at this, it's, it shows that it found an event, but it didn't save anything. We didn't save any clips, and that's because we haven't told it to yet. So if we want that, we need to go back to our file. And we're going to edit a bit more. So I'm going to re-enlarge this for you guys. And we're going to pick up right here where we left off with person. And we're going to go back a step so that it's even with width. And we're going to add a tag called snapshots, colon, and then hit return, two spaces. We're going to put enabled, colon, true. So we want snapshots. Timestamp is up to you. You can put true or false, but I'm going to put timestamp, colon, true. I like to timestamp on it so that I can see when something happened. So if I ever have to call in authorities, then they can see when it happened as well when it was recorded. Uh, bounding box, so that we don't have to turn it on that switch. Uh, we'll just set it to true here in the configuration. It'll just be on. Uh, retain. So this one's kind of important. This is how many days you want it to retain the recordings. So you're going to hit retain and then return two spaces. And we're going to put default colon two. Now you can set that to four or five, but that's how many days it's going to keep these videos. And if you have a lot of motion happening and it records these videos or these snapshots, that could take up a lot of space. So depending on how much space you have on, on your home assistant, you may or may not want that to be a larger number than I'm putting here, but I'm going to use two. So that's really everything that we need in order for this to function now. We should be able to get snapshots out of this. So that would, do, that would do still photos, basically, which is snapshots. The other thing we want to add are clips, so recorded clips. So I'm going to go back, uh, going to return. I'm going to go back so that I'm even with snapshots, and I'm going to type in clips, colon, two spaces, and enabled, colon, true. So when you're, when you're, if you're watching this, it's clips, colon, return, and then two spaces, enabled, colon, space, true. You're going to hit return again. We're going to do retain colon two spaces after you hit return default colon two so again I'm telling it to hold these for two days so again check your spelling make sure everything looks like it's spelled correctly and then save up here at the top it should tell you that it was saved successfully we're gonna go back over to our supervisor screen and again I'm gonna pull this out just a bit we're going to click on Frigate NVR and we're going to hit restart because we've changed that configuration. We're going to tell it to restart now. Give it just a little bit of time to go in and say, okay, you've changed something about me. I need to find what that is. And again, you should see this change. We can hit the log, make sure it looks like everything started up. 
wait a few seconds, hit refresh, make sure you don't see any errors in the log. And we can go back to our Frigate NVR here. And again, we see the outside. I'm just going to click on it. And now I'm going to go walk around a little bit and see if we get some event clips and some snapshots. Okay, I went out and did that. It should be doing some recording now, hopefully, if everything's going the way we want. Uh, one of the things that we'll have to do is I have to be at a frame for about 10 seconds so that it can start recording. As long as that motion that it's detecting, that person is detecting is in frame, it's not going to stop finding them and it's not going to stop recording and it's not going to save the file. So you need to actually have some time where somebody's out of the frame for it to save that file and realize, okay, there's, they're not there anymore. All right, so here we go. Now we've got this recording. So you can see here it's got a still clip. It tells us what the percentage accuracy it was as far as that being a person. It gives you kind of a still shot. When you click here, it starts the recording automatically right here in the, in the screen. So you can see what's happening. And it goes back a little before it actually detected a person. And then it comes in and it shows you, hey, this is, this is what I saw. So I just walked around, moved around a little bit. And when I left the frame, that's when it kicked off the timer to say, okay, this person's probably gone. And then it records just a little bit more. And then down here, you can kind of see, here's where I detected that it was a person, and this is where my percentage accuracy came from. So it gives you some pretty cool information there, and it does a pretty good job of it. So we've got Frigate actually recording. We've got it doing some really cool stuff. There's one more thing to do here. So there's also an integration. So we installed the Has OS add-on, which is letting us use Frigate to start with. But there's also a Has IO or Has OS integration that we can add. So we want to get this integration. We're going to come over here to GitHub. We're going to highlight this page right here, and we're going to click on Copy. We're going to go back to our Home Assistant, and we're going to go down to Configuration, Integrations. So before we install the Frigate integration, we actually need to install the Hacks integration. So you saw the Hacks add-on store is already set up, but we actually need to set up the Hacks integration as well, the Home Assistant Community Store integration. So if we go over to this link, which I'll post in the show notes in the description, you'll see the first thing that they say is, if you don't know all of these things, you should not proceed. So they're kind of warning you up front, like make sure you know what you're running and, and what it's running on and, and everything like that. But once you feel comfortable with that, move forward with your installation steps, and they basically tell you what's going on here. So I'm going to enlarge this just a little bit for you guys. So it says here that if you want to know more about what kind of install you have for Home Assistant, you need to go to the configuration panel, the info block, and then look under uh, the installation type. So right here for installation type, you see we have Home Assistant OS. So if we go back to their stuff, here's the instructions for Home Assistant OS on how to get this installed. So it says go to the supervisor panel, Install one of the SSH add-ons, so we'll need SSH. Configure the SSH add-on to have your, have your um, credentials set up. Start the SSH add-on, connect to the SSH add-on, and then run the hacks install script. So let's go do these first steps for the SSH add-on first. So if you don't find SSH in the add-on store, the thing you need to do is come down and click on your name. And then inside of this, we want to turn on advanced user mode. So we're going to scroll down until we see advanced mode and you see how this is off. I'm just going to tick that box to turn it on. This is also places where you can change your password, set up multi-factor authentication, refresh your tokens, and so on. Now we're going to go back to the supervisor screen. We're going to go to the add-on store and we'll type in SSH, which now we see we've got some SSH options. So there's the SSH and web terminal or terminal and SSH. So it's kind of up to you which one you want to use. I'm going to use the terminal and SSH. I'm going to uh, install it. Now before we start it, we probably want to set it up so that we have Watchdog, which will restart it for us. And then we want to show it in the sidebar. So it shows up over here and we can access it easily. Next we need to go to configuration before we start it. And right here we can put in a password or you can generate authorization keys. Um, it's kind of up to you how you do that, but if you want to set up a password, I suggest doing that here. 
Um, so we'll just use, um, this is not a good password, make sure you set up a very strong password for your SSH. This is just a test system for me, but make sure if you're using a production system you have a really strong password there. And then down here we're going to set up on the host port 22 so that we're getting everything forwarded correctly. And then we should be set. We're just going to click on save here. And then, oh, make sure you fill in 22 again after you make that change. We're going to click 22 and hit save here. Now we should be set and we'll go back to our info tab and we're going to click on start. We should, things, should see things start up here. We're going to click on the log and just double check and make sure it looks like everything's running and it looks like it's listening on port 22 which is great. Now we can click on our terminal window here and you see we get into the terminal through the web browser which is really nice, makes it very easy for us. So now that we've got our SSH terminal up, we can go back to our hacks documentation and we can basically grab this script and you can just click on the copy link over here on the right, that makes it a little bit easier. We're going to jump back in here and we're going to right click and do paste to paste in that command and then we're going to press enter to run the command. You should see some output kind of like this. And it says remember to restart Home Assistant before you configure it. So we'll go do a restart on Home Assistant. In order to do a restart, we're going to do Supervisor. We're going to go over here to System. And we're going to do Reboot Host in this case. And then just confirm that. And then give it a little bit of time to reboot. All right, now that you've rebooted, we're going to go over here to Configuration. Integrations. We're going to let those fill in a little bit here and we're going to add a new integration. We're going to go look for hacks. We're going to click on it. So when you start to install hacks, it's going to come up with this list of checkboxes. You need to check each one and then click on submit. I'm going to copy this code and then I'm going to click this link and open it in a new tab. And I'm going to paste in that code. Oh, there it is. It did paste in. Good. I'm going to hit continue. And it's going to say hacks by hacks and I'm going to say authorize hacks and it says congratulations you're all set and we should be good to go we can close this and come back to our home assistant page and there we go so hacks it says area we don't need to put an area for this because we're going to use it everywhere so we'll just click on finish and we should now see our hacks integration here at the bottom all right now that we've got hacks installed we're going to click over here on the left on hacks and you'll see that we have some information here about hacks so we're going to select integrations when you first set up hacks you'll see these two messages so just be aware that hacks may still be getting started up and, and getting everything set and then additionally when you add things to github it's rate limited so it says it should clear up in about an hour um, just be patient and let that go what we want to do is go find integrations and we need to add a custom repository now depending on if it's gotten far enough with github to be able to do that we may or may not be able to access those those things but it should be here in the upper right corner on the three dots we should have custom repository as an option here but it's not there yet so we'll have to wait for a little bit and see if it comes up all right after we've given it a little bit of time we're going to go up here to the upper right corner we're going to click on this uh three dots and you should see custom repositories here so we're going to click on that and we need to get our URL. So again, I'll have this link in the show notes, but we're going to go over here to GitHub for Frigate. We're just going to grab this URL here. We're going to copy it. We're going to go back to our home assistant and we're going to paste it in there. For category, we're going to select integration. And we're going to select add. Now we see that we have Frigate set up, which is great. That's what we've been looking for. So we're going to click on close. So one more time, we'll click on hacks on the left. We're going to click on integrations. We're going to click on add integration. And we'll search for Frigate. And here it is right here. And we're going to click on install this repository in hacks. I'm not going to show beta versions, but you can feel free to show beta versions by ticking this box here. And we're going to say install. Now we see the Frigate integration for Home Assistant, which is great. Once we've got the Frigate uh, application set up here inside of Hacks, we're going to go back to Configuration, Integrations. We're going to click on Add Integration. And we're going to look for Frigate in our list, and here it is. 
again we're going to just look through the documentation they've got here real quick this should be pre-filled you should not have to change this URL and we're going to hit on submit again if you have an area for frigate you can put it in but in this case mine would be anywhere around my home I'm just going to hit finish and now we see the frigate integration shows up here and immediately we see that it has one device and 13 entities so if we just click to go look at the entities you'll see that it shows PyCam1 and as we scroll down because we're doing person detection you see that it's got PyCam1 detect and there's a lot of stuff here that we can do with this so PyCam1 uh, person motion so now we can start creating automations using these different entities which is really great because now we've got an NVR and we can use person detection to set up automations to do all kinds of different things if you're looking for automations where you're detecting something else maybe you're trying to detect Maybe you're trying to detect bicycles for some reason and you have something where you need to create uh, an action so that a sign comes up or who knows, right? I mean, you could just do any kind of thing with this as far as the automation goes. But for me, I just want to know if there's a person walking around in my backyard. So I'd want to set up a automation that sends me a message on my mobile device and lets me know that there's something going on in my yard. Um, and we'll get into that and, and I'll show you how to set up those automations here next. I'm going to move back over to my main system for that and I'll show you how that works. Alright, here we are back on my main Home Assistant system and in this case I've got both cameras set up. I've got the Pi Cam one that we set up on the test system and I've got my second Pi camera over here on my, on my uh, main, main system as well and you can see that if I go into one of these I do get events that get triggered and you can see me moving around in my yard um, different things like that that happen and the same thing on the Pi Cam 2 we can see the live view but we can also see events that are getting triggered by this camera that's great I'm getting recordings and things but I want to know when something's happening when I'm not sitting here just staring at the screen so the next thing I want to do is set up an automation that sends me a notification and I've got those set up but I'll go through how to set it up with you guys right now so when you, just, when you want to set up an automation you go to configuration automations and here you'll see I've got a lot of automations but we'll add a new automation first and we'll work through the process of what we need to set up so the first thing we're going to do is give it a name so I always hit the skip and I just come in and give it a name so I'm going to call this frigate notify of motion cam of motion how about that so we'll go down and that's good we're gonna leave it as single the trigger in this case is going to be I believe we're gonna leave that as device and we're gonna look up frigate so right here you see I've got frigate backyard and frigate NVR no data so I believe if I go to frigate backyard right here you can see Pi cam one person motion started detecting motion so this it, it kind of fills this out for you now if you didn't want this to go off immediately if you wanted it to wait for a few seconds to make sure that it wasn't a false positive you could put in a delay right here but in my case if it sees person motion I want to know about it whether it's me or somebody else doesn't matter now if you wanted to have two different things that trigger this you can add another trigger so I could add both cameras to make sure that my trigger is getting set up correctly but in this case that one's a good start now I'm going to skip over conditions for now but you can put conditions that say um, something like uh, device and I think if I do uh, iPhone so if I say my phone is not at home um, yeah so Brian is home and then we have Brian is not home so I can say if my device is not home that's when I want this to tell me something going on in the backyard um, then we go down to actions so we're going to say call service here we've got the service name and I'm going to look up notify so as I start typing you see it starts kind of coming up with these different things and I'm going to look specifically for my for my device here but if you wanted to notify everyone you would just type in notify dot notify and you see here it says it's going to send it to all devices um, but for me I'm going to put my phone and so you would do mobile app Brian iPhone XR in this case is me you would pick yours and as we move down you'll see that for your mobile app you have a message so this is motion detected from Pi Cam 1 title motion let's see backyard motion 
And then if you wanted to send it any kind of target information or data, you can. And we'll get into the data part probably in another video where we can send images or even make it show us video whenever we get that notification. But for now, we're just going to leave it alone and just make sure we can actually get the notification. So we're going to click on Save. And we're going to go up here and we're going to say Run the Action. And I'm going to record my phone screen. All right, and I'm going to send the notification and there it is. So I see that I get this notification on my screen. I can touch it. It doesn't have any actions that I can do. I can just clear out the notification for now. But I get a notification that there's motion happening in the in the camera, which is great. That's what I want. Now, if I really want to test it, I need to go outside and actually walk around and see if I get the notification that there was motion. So that's the next step that we're going to do. And there you could see that I did get some motion up on the phone device, uh, some motion detection, so that was really great. It worked just like we thought it should, and we can stop our recording now. So that's how you set up a quick automation. You set up Frigate, you set up the Frigate application, the add-on, and then you set up the Frigate integration so that you can get some notifications about it. But if you just want the add-on, if you just want a really great NVR, then you can just set up the Frigate add-on. And you can you can get that uh, nice NVR set up where it will do motion detection, where it will do person detection even, and do capture and things like that triggered by those detections. Just follow the steps, take your time, and you can have it all set up in about half an hour maybe and, and really be up and running. I want to remind you about the contest that's coming up. I am going to be giving away a Raspberry Pi 4 2 gigabyte model, uh, the case, the HDMI to micro HDMI uh, cable heat sinks, an SD card that's already got Home Assistant on it, uh, as well as four Shelly light bulb duos uh, that will go with it, and then a Shelly button one. So uh, I've got four kits, two for uh, 120 volt folks and two kits for 240 volt folks. So if you'd like to win, make sure to go over to discuss.opensourceisawesome.com and sign up, and then join the channel I want it, and let me know what the voltage is for your country. Uh, and if you are interested, just check out the links in the show notes in the description that will point you to the video with all of the information that you need. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along the journey with us, and I'll talk to you next time.